Let's extend the work that we did on implementing an algorithm to do matrix column vector multiplication via linear combinations and adapt it to code an algorithm that does row vector matrix multiplication via linear combinations. As always, we're going to start with the formal mathematical definition and see how that translates into working computer code. To start this, we say let A be an element of R M by N. So it's M row N column matrix. And then we have a vector X, which is an element of R M by one. In other words, it's a column vector where the number of rows of X matches the number of rows of A. From our definition, we know that the linear combination version of row vector matrix multiplication is given by X transpose times A. That's going to be the output vector B, which will be a one by N row vector. That linear combination is given by X transpose times A is going to be the first entry of X multiplied by the first row of A plus the second entry of X multiplied by the second row of A all the way till we get to the last row of A. A has M rows, so this last sum end must be X sub M, the Mth entry of X multiplied by the Mth row of A. We can use summation notation to write that X transpose times A is the sum from I goes from one to M of X sub I times the I row, where we use the index I to indicate that we're going over rows. This definition is analogous to our linear combination version of matrix column vector multiplication. Two major differences are one, in this case, we're using the rows of A rather than the columns and two, X shows up on the left hand side in this definition with the transpose so that the inner dimensions must agree. Particularly X transpose is a one by M, A is an M by N, the output vector B is a one by N. Recall from our previous video on implementing the matrix column vector multiplication via linear combinations algorithm that we transform this mathematical algorithm into the pseudocode implementation seen at the bottom here where we initialized our value of Y and then we actually ran through the columns to do this linear combination where each loop iteration was given by an Axby operation. Here we're going to adapt that same approach to transform into a row version. So specifically here we're going to initialize our value of Y to be the row vector of appropriate form and then we're going to go over the rows of our matrix and in each loop iteration, we're going to do an Axby operation on the rows of A. For those of you that haven't watched that previous video, this is a great time to go do that. In this video, we're going to implement this algorithm and test row vector matrix multiplication. As is a theme in this class, every time we do a lot of hard work and create understanding, it's very useful to reuse that. Let's go to our file that was to play with matrix column vector multiplication via linear combinations. And we'll just go ahead and duplicate that and change it to row vector matrix multiplication via linear combinations. And we call it the sandbox because this is not production code. It's literally plain in the sand. Now let's open that and we're going to adapt our code for our new context. Just like before, we're going to clear the workspace and the command window. We'll create our test data to verify our algorithm. We, the matrix we're going to use is the matrix A that we've seen in multiple previous examples. In this case, the vector X is no longer a three by one, but instead a four by one given by the examples that we saw previously. Once we have that data, we want to use MATLAB's native functions to test our own against. So in this case, we'll define Y map to be X transpose times A. This is the MATLAB output to verify our algorithm. We'll continue with the same step where we set the size of A to be the row and column dimension using the size function. We're not ready for the entry by entry updates right now. We're still in the early phase of just testing a single loop running through the rows. I'm going to go ahead and comment that out because I don't need it. And I'll uncomment the previous one, which is a not matrix column vector, but row vector matrix multiplication, BLOSS level two vector sized outputs. And this is a uh, via linear combinations. All right, now that I've tracked that this is the row vector matrix multiplication via linear combinations, I of course must change this. No longer is my potential output going to be a column vector, but it's going to be a row vector, one row and N columns. Since it's coming from X transpose times A, X is a one by M, A is an M by N, so the output is a one by N. In this case, we're not going to go over the columns of A, but instead traverse through the rows of A. There are M rows, so I'm going to set from I goes from one to M. And then in each iteration, I'm going to add the previous version of Y 
to the ith entry of x. So this would be the ith entry of x, kind of special because we defined x as a column vector. So in this case, we're actually going to take uh, the entry in row i column 1. If we had defined row x as a row vector, this would be x1 comma i. This gets back to some linear algebra notation, but it's important to remember. Uh, over here, I'm going to multiply the ith entry of x by the ith uh, row of a in this case, and then I'm going to update. So the claim is, I think we are now ready to test whether or not the vector we produce is the same as the one that MATLAB's internal function does. So at the end of this, we'll go ahead and just verify our output, verify output, compare and contrast. And as a numerical analyst, we can actually look at the error between the two of these. So we'll call this error, and we'll look at y mat minus y. The error is zero if and only if those two things are identical. So let's go ahead and run that. Notice when we do this, oh, you know what? Uh, these were both row vectors, so they're printing them out as a concatenated uh, argument. What I want is column next to column. Let's run that again. Oop, I missed it again. So this is y mat transpose comma. There we go. So now they're right next to each other. We see that it's the same vector, which we expected. The error is all zero, so they produce the same. And we're feeling pretty good about our implementation. We've only tested on one example. Of course, we could actually change the way that we approach here. So let's go ahead and comment this out and comment this out. And then what we'll do is uh, let's create some random examples that are quite uh, a bit larger. So we'll call this rand um, maybe we say that it is a 25 by 20 matrix, and then x would be rand. Um, and perhaps we say this is going to be, well, let's see. If it's 25, uh, the row dimension is 25, this means this must be 25 by 1. And then let's run again and see what happens. Um, yeah, so 10 to the negative, yeah, this is kind of fun. Um, we see that they're pretty good. So looks like the algorithm is producing one way. Uh, you, you know, you have to actually compare the individual outputs there. And then here, 10, uh, 1 times e to the, or 10 to the negative 14 is basically 0. But it's actually not easy to see that as written. So one thing that we can do is actually, we can define the norm of the difference. And this will give us a single scalar, which if it's close to 0, we say that that quantity produced by our algorithm matches closely what we want it to, to work with. And this error is 5 times 10 to the negative 15. That's pretty close to 0. Now, the difference between the two has to do with round off errors and exactly what's happening in the algorithm. The point of the matter, though, this is a very quick way to test whether or not our algorithm is working. And indeed, we could do this all day, right? We could just pr keep producing this, keep producing this. And we've now tested 15 different ways that the algorithm that we've written produces the type of output that we expect. One of my favorite things to say to learners that I work with is that you are genius. Your whole humanity is genius. No question about it. In addition to that, one of the ways to strengthen our genius is to look for multiple representation of each technical idea that we study. In this case, we've written some code. We've looked at the mathematical definition. I want to visualize that. Visualization is a wonderful way to represent knowledge. We're going to use the same structure that we've done in the past. The mathematical operation that we're working with is rho vector y plus x transpose times a. We've translated this into pseudocode given on the left-hand side, which is y gets y plus xi times the ith row of a. And then I want to look at the visual progression that actually happens in the loop. So when we initialize the loop, we actually have three different data structures sitting in memory. We have our initial value of y. We have set y to be a row vector. I'm going to represent it as a column vector because my screen is not very long and I want to be really clear. So this is a visual technique, but this does get into a larger theme in computer science, which is the difference between a row vector and a column vector is really in the mind of the user. For computation, it's a matter of how we're storing data. This is an introductory class where we're studying algorithms abstractly rather than how those interact with software and hardware. But the point of the matter here is I'm expecting y to be a row vector. I'm representing it as a column vector. That's useful for visualization. But it also represents some tricks that we use inside the memory hierarchies of our computer. In any case, we have our vector y that we're hoping to produce. We have our matrix A, which is our test data, and also our column vector x, which we hit on the left of A using a transpose. 
we're actually not going to take the transpose, but instead just traverse down the entries and multiply by each individual row. So once we've initialized and we have these sitting in the memories, we drop into the first loop iteration where i is 1. What we do in this case is we multiply x by the entire first row and then add that product to the previous values of y. And that's what we see over here. Next, we take the second entry of the vector x multiplied by the entire second row. We add that to the previous value and we see we get this new update. We go down to the third iteration, third entry of x multiplied by the third row. And we go down to the last iteration where we take the last entry multiplied by the last row. And we get this linear combination, which is exactly what we expect for the row vector matrix product. When we exit our loop, the vector y now stores our desired output, which is the initial vector y plus a linear combination of rows. Oops, there is a mistake in this. This should say x transpose times a since we're doing row vector matrix multiplication. That was a copy and paste error, so sorry about that. Just like we've seen before, we can adapt our BLOSS level 2 to actually go down to BLOSS level 1. In other words, this deals with vector valued data. We can actually adapt the inner portion of our loop to deal with entry by entry data. Let's do that now. We'll go back up to this and we'll use the integer example that we had previously since we actually know the output of that. Let's uncomment this one more time. And then uh, we no longer need this one since we're going to be replacing the inner part of our loop with a second loop to run through the individual entry. So we'll go ahead and comment this out. We'll bring the verification to the end of our script file so that we can use it in either situation. Now let's comment this one out. Um, and we're going to replace the outer loop with the values that we had. So here, this outer loop is going to be um, as follows. For i goes from 1 to m. And then let's remember what this is. This is a row vector, and we want to move through the columns of the row vector. So we're going to go for k goes from 1 to n. And then what we're going to do is move through the individual columns of y. Let me just go ahead and type the n command so I know it. So for each of these iterations, this is a Saxby, where I run through each individual column. This must be the kth column. And then I add x sub i comma 1 times a i comma k. In other words, uh, the first thing I do is I look at entry 1. I add entry 1 of y to x1 times a11. Then I go over x1 times a12 x1 times a13 continuously. I add those up, so I go across the row. Then I move down to the next one, and that's how I get that linear combination. For a review of that, watch our previous videos. Of course, this is not the matrix column vector multiplication algorithm. This is row vector matrix via linear combination, so I'm going to go ahead and update that. And this is a entry by entry update process. Uh, this would not be a m by 1, but instead a 1 by n. And I think I'm ready. Let's go ahead and run this. Check that out. We get exactly what we expect. Now, of course, some of you might say, hey, this is not rigorous testing. Maybe you should do some work on more complex examples. And I can do that. Nice thing about MATLAB is that I can make my examples uh, more complex than I could do by hand. And yet still, my algorithm produces some uh, decent work. Oops, let's try again. Uh, yeah, so same thing occurs, right? Um, I'm running through 125 different values, large matrix, check it out. Uh, and yet my error is quite small, right? It's like uh, 4 times 10 to the negative 14. Um, I do want you to generate questions. Where does that error come from and why is it happening? That gets into much more advanced topics that we're going to touch in way later in this course. Here we are developing your mathematical and computer science genius. Let's do that in multiple ways and visualize what's happening. The math operation that we're shooting for is to calculate y plus x transpose times a, which is a row vector matrix multiplication written in computer science language. Over here is the nested for loop. Here we have a doubly nested for loop. The outer loop runs through the rows. The inner loop runs through the columns. And we update each individual entry of our output with the previous entry plus the appropriate x times the entry that we want. In the initialization, we have three different data structures. We have a vector y, which is supposed to be a row vector visualized as a column vector. We have a vector x, which is a column vector. And then we have a matrix A. And what we're going to do is update each individually. When we drop into the outer loop i goes to 1 and inner loop k, 
we multiply the first entry of x times entry 1, 1 of a, and then add that to uh, the first value of y. When we increment the inner loop index, k goes to 2, we drop over to the second column, we multiply that by x1, and we add it to the second column of our output. Again, this is visualized as a column because my screen has more space vertically than it does horizontally. Once more, when we increment k, we go over to the third entry, multiply by x1, and add it there. And we just keep going through where we multiply each individual one and update. You can kind of follow along here, as you see, we're multiplying the individual scalars, moving across the rows, column by column, and updating all the way working through both the outer loop and the inner loop. Eventually, when we exit, we actually have the exact value that we wanted from this operation, and we can see how we've accessed the data in our matrix, as well as our vector, and how we've updated our output. That leads us to our community challenge for today. On the right-hand side of our screen, here we have two different algorithms, one of them a single for loop and the other a doubly nested for loop for implementing row vector matrix multiplication via linear combination. On the left-hand side, we have our two algorithms from a past video for implementing matrix column vector multiplication via linear combination. The first algorithm is a BLOSS level two vector value data that includes a single for loop. And the second one is a BLOSS level one entry by entry definition with a doubly nested for loop working through the columns. Now, here is the challenge for you all. When you compare these two algorithms, how do these algorithms work through the data structure, which is the matrix A sitting in memory? This becomes particularly important. Different programming languages parse matrices in different ways. Back when Fortran was a thing, Fortran would parse matrices given columns while C works through the rows. So depending on what language you're working in, you can optimize your code by writing column versions or you could optimize your code by writing row versions. The point of this exercise is for you to go back and study and actually see how the different algorithms that we've written work through the matrix A. With that, I thank you so much for your attention and I'll see you in the next video where we study an algorithm for row vector matrix multiplication via dot products. See you there.